Welcome back to my bake escape. I know it's been a while since I've posted videos here, but I am excited to finally bring you some new content. 2023 has been a very busy year for me, but I am back and I am back with a delicious waffle recipe. Before I share this recipe, I just have to tell you that I have had my eye on this specific waffle maker for years, at least two years, and I finally went and purchased it. And so what I'm sharing with you today is a recipe for delicious buttermilk waffles. Now you don't necessarily need this waffle maker. You can use one if you've already had it, but if you haven't purchased one, I encourage you to consider this one. For the full recipe, visit mybakeescape.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Pinterest at mybakeescape. So the waffle maker that I purchased is the Breville Smart Waffle Pro, and it is amazing. I will share with you a lot of the features that it offers in this video. To start this recipe, you will need the following ingredients all-purpose flour, egg whites, egg yolks, granulated sugar, baking powder, salt, vanilla extract, melted butter, and buttermilk. The first step to this recipe is to combine the wet ingredients. So I have a larger bowl that I add the buttermilk to, and then to the buttermilk, I add the melted butter, followed by the egg yolks and whisk this together. I often get questions about this whisk that I use. It is used in a lot of my videos because it is my favorite. It is a double balloon whisk and it can be found on my favorite link on my website. I love it because it's lightweight, easy to use and clean, and it's perfect for whisking together eggs, egg whites. So to this mixture, I add the vanilla extract, mix that in and then set this aside while I work on the dry ingredients. Now the dry ingredients consist of the flour, salt, granulated sugar, and baking powder. Now this is ready for the wet mixture to be incorporated. I don't know if you've seen in recipes where it says to create a well in your flour. The way that you create a well is by using your hand to gently push the flour out to the edges to create or a hole in the middle of your flour and that is where I'm going to add the wet ingredients and using my favorite whisk I mix these two together now I mix probably for about 45 seconds and the goal isn't to remove all of the lumps but I do want to make sure that the flour is incorporated into the wet mixture. So after about 45 seconds of whisking, this is what the batter looks like. It's mostly smooth with a few little lumps and that's just fine. So I set that aside while I work on my egg whites. Now these waffles are light and airy and fluffy and super delicious. And what gives them that light and airy texture is whipped egg whites. If you haven't whipped egg whites before, you need to make sure that you have a clean bowl and you need a large enough bowl where your egg whites can grow and double in size. So I use my favorite hand mixer and I start beating these eggs on a medium setting until they start to turn white and frothy and kind of start to double in size. And then I changed the setting to high and then just continued to beat these egg whites until they form stiff peaks. Now what a stiff peak is, is when you lift the beater, you'll see a peak form and it holds this shape. And so this is what the egg whites should look like. Next, I'm going to fold the egg whites into the batter. Now, if you've never folded ingredients into a batter, what you wanna do is take a large spatula and gently turn your spatula around the outside of the ingredients and then push it in the middle and just gently mix in without deflating those egg whites. You want that airiness to come from the egg whites so you need to be careful and so you want to gently fold the egg whites into your batter. I continue to fold the egg whites in until the majority of the white portion was no longer visible. And this is what the batter looks like after the egg whites have been incorporated. So I set my batter aside while I prep my waffle maker. So 
this waffle maker is smart in that it will tell you when it's ready and when you need to add the ingredients and when the waffles are cooked. So right now I have it set to the classic setting and I do prefer my waffles a little darker. So I adjusted the darkness setting. You do not need any nonstick cooking spray or butter. You could just add the batter directly onto the waffle iron. Next, they provide this wonderful measuring cup. So for half of this cup, you'll get one waffle, or for the full cup, you get two waffles. So I'm gonna fill this up twice because I do want four waffles. So as the waffle maker is heating up, I go ahead and fill up my cup with the batter. I didn't really keep track of how long it took, but it was probably about six or seven minutes for this to heat up and it notified me by beeping and letting me know that it was ready to add the batter. So I gently pour the batter in, into each section of the waffle maker. And as I stated, I wanted to make four, so I went ahead and refilled this cup to make a total of four waffles. Now this recipe will yield eight waffles total for this specific machine. So now I shut the waffle maker and it gives me about six and a half minute time frame for these to cook and be ready. Look at all that steam, and not only is it steamy, but it smells incredible. Once the waffles are cooked, the machine beeps. It tells me that the cooking cycle has ended and I'm able to remove the waffles from the pan. Now, some advice. This was the first time I used this waffle maker and so I grabbed the thing that was most readily available, which was a fork. But I would encourage you to use something like a silicone spatula or tongs with the silicone um, coating just because you don't want to scratch your waffle maker. It is a nonstick coating on there. so. For future reference, I will not use a fork. I was very careful to not scrape it. Just a tip for you. So I went ahead and placed my second batch of waffles in there and finished the rest of the batter, closed the lid and allowed those to cook. This time it says that it's gonna take seven minutes to cook. While that second batch is cooking, I couldn't wait any longer, so I decided to go ahead and prepare these waffles the way I like them. I love to add lots of salted real butter. I really enjoy having a little bit of butter and syrup in each of those little square crevices. They're so delicious. So I added some maple syrup. Oh, I was so excited to try these. I'm telling you, I've been wanting this waffle maker for so many years and I was finally able to get it and make waffles and I was so excited. These waffles were nice and toasty and crispy on the outside, but so tender, fluffy and soft on the inside. And they are incredible, perfectly cooked and sweetened and it was amazing. I am so happy with this purchase. So now the second batch of waffles is done, so I removed them from the waffle iron. They are hot, but as you see, I'm able to remove them, you know, okay with my fingers without burning myself, but you can use an oven mitt, or as I mentioned earlier, a spatula or some tongs to remove the waffles. Now we only ate four of these waffles and so I decided to allow the other four to cool on a cooling rack and I am going to freeze these waffles because not only would they be good to just pop in the toaster for breakfast on another day, but they're also great for dessert waffles. So to freeze these waffles, I let them cool completely on a cooling rack to avoid them steaming. You know, you don't want them to be soft. So to kind of keep their shape and the texture as much as possible, I let them cool completely on a cooling rack and then I wrap each waffle individually in some aluminum foil. And once I have all of the wrapped waffles ready to go, I place them in a Ziploc bag. I always like to label my Ziploc bags with what is inside and also the date because Typically things have a freezer shelf life of three to six months. So it's very important that you label 
you know, the items that you put in your freezer. These didn't even last longer than two weeks because we decided to use them to make delicious dessert waffles. And I'll show you how I did that later on in this video. So the wonderful thing about this Breville Smart Waffle Pro is it's super easy to use and very easy to clean. I failed to mention that before I even used this waffle maker, I made sure to clean it. And the way that I did it was I used a damp washcloth and I wiped down the surfaces and I washed that measuring cup that they provide with soap and water. So I made sure to clean everything before using it. And since I didn't have to use any butter or non-stick cooking spray for the waffle maker, it's actually really easy to clean. I use a, a damp, warm washcloth and I just wipe each surface, really getting into the nooks and crevices to make sure I get every single piece of, you know, crumbs or waffles that could be left behind. I wipe the outside of the machine. At this point, I did let it cool. I turned the waffle maker off and I let it cool for about 30 minutes before cleaning it. I will definitely be using this at least once a week. This makes Saturday morning waffles or Sunday brunch so much easier. I'm looking forward to trying different recipes. I was kind of thinking like a churro waffle or even dessert waffles that have like peaches and cream, strawberries and cream, and lots of different flavorings. So if that's something that you wanna see, leave a comment down below. Give me some ideas what types of waffles you'd like to see me make with this Breville Smart Pro Waffle Maker. Now this video is not sponsored by Breville. I just really love their products and I wanted to share, like I always do, my favorites when it comes to baking. So once I wiped down the waffle maker with the washcloth, I went ahead and went over all the surfaces with a paper towel just to collect any wetness that may have been left behind and then I stored my waffle maker. All right, on to the dessert waffles. As you saw earlier, I froze four of the waffles. Now, when you pull these frozen waffles out, you don't necessarily want to cook them to reheat them. You just want to reheat them slowly. And so the toaster is the best option for this. So I place a frozen waffle in the toaster and I set it to reheat. Or if you don't have that setting, you can set it to the lowest level and allow it to warm up. And, and what I like to do is top it with whatever I have on hand. So I've got Nutella, I always have Nutella on hand, it's such a favorite. And I have whipped cream and I also had a little bit of vanilla ice cream. So I start by spreading a good portion of this delicious creamy Nutella. So Nutella is hazelnuts and chocolate. So it's like a peanut butter, but made with hazelnuts and chocolate. And if you haven't tried it yet, I highly encourage you to try it. Then I added some vanilla ice cream and I had a little bit of this Ghirardelli sea salt caramel on hand. So I added a little bit of that. Followed by some whipped cream. And there you have it, a delicious, dessert waffle made from leftover frozen waffles. And you can top these waffles with your choice of toppings, but I love the way the Nutella with the ice cream tastes. The warmth from the waffle starts to melt that Nutella and then the ice cream and the whipped cream and it gets all gooey and delicious and you just gotta try it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching and have a sweet day.